the Apollo Moon Exploring Toy Line, Imperial Toy Corporation, the credited maker. 1970, I think, is the date on all the packages. Toy pieces manufactured by LP Toys. Some had been made for a while by LP for other purposes. They may have made them through 1971. After that, it was it was over for the plastic space toy fad of the early NASA era. It's my Major Matt Mason miniaturized vehicle stash. Major Matt's moon crawler back there. And I love this blocky triple axle orange thing. Anybody who has a clue what it might be based on, give us a shout. It's one of the prospectors, moon prospectors. Its antenna array is missing, but it's got a nice American flag. We got plenty of those out here with the uh, moon exploration crew. Those uh, Apollo suited astronauts are unique to these uh, play sets. Tangentially related to the uh, Golden Astronaut line in that they both use the Golden Astronaut figures that LP toys made. There's the uh, Major Matt Mason Thunderbolt Cannon, ubiquitous flying saucer, Mercury Capsule with chromed pilot. Some sets had a little stand for the Apollo Command Service Module, but it does not dock with the uh, Lunar Module. A lot of this stuff was collected into a nice big box set produced in honestly in Hong Kong. There's the RM1 from Disney's Man in the Moon with Dr. Werner von Braun. The little red cruiser was produced in a larger scale as a friction toy by everybody under the sun. And one of the LP toys checkers rockets a piece of uh, bling they call a space satellite over the moon terrain with a dish stuck on it. This actually is not Apollo Moon Exploring. They did a version of it that had a firing rocket on wheels. I, I guess this is my favorite of them all, which is this big hollow machine they refer to as a command center. Form is borrowed from the good old Operation X-500 missile base set by Deluxe Redding, simplified here into a hollow body form with no uh, mechanical or moving parts. Gone are the launching rockets. And they've got these radar dishes stuck on top of it, which is, I guess that's kind of cool. Uh, and two, two golden astronauts. I, I love the, uh, the, the mechanized faceplate there. That's just, that's a masterwork. Seriously, it's like something out of Metropolis with them big dials and whirly gigs. Little guy there working it. Hard plastic. Uh, and apparently I found another. Or, or something similar. It looks a little bigger. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than that. How about that? Two of the holes are unfilled. I'm presuming that the springs are wrong. We're a tension mounted rocket launch. I think that's what that is. I see the evidence of adhesive. So it's not an Apollo moon exploring piece at all. <laughs> Completely overjoyed to discover that this is something totally different. The vertical strokes on the ends are not seen on the Apollo Moon Exploring version. It is also both longer and taller. Hey, look at that. Blue Box, wow. Blue Box, Singapore. Sure enough, here's a new old stock example, courtesy of the kind folks at Moonbase Central. Looks like it's got two unique figures to go with it as well. The rockets are nice too, I guess, but this guy looks like something right out of Metropolis. I gotta find some of them. Though it does bring up the question of what the heck do I do with all that video I shot. As an artist, I'm fascinated by these design similarities and how one form 
became the other. They didn't just, you know, how, how do you make a smaller version or how do you make a bigger version of it? You just shrink down the mold? No, they had to sculpt the whole new thing all over again. The same designer or designers was working for both companies at some point, apparently. I think it's got exactly the same little dials and components on it. Three green on top, three green on top, switches on either side, two small screens, and then the dials up at the corners. And the same stairwell, although larger. And we'll figure out uh, what the rest of it's from and report back soon. <laughs> now I get to put all this stuff away. I, I love, love putting my toys away.